So from the SOC today, I'm joined by Eric Ford, Senior Threat Intel Analyst here at DeepWatch. Eric is part of our Advisory Tactics and Intelligence Team, ATI, and he's responsible not only for performing that sort of work, the ATI team work, but actually a significant amount of the content generated by the ATI team goes through him. So Eric, thanks for taking a little bit of time today to uh, talk with us about OSINT. Yeah, great, great to be here. So Eric, let's just start from the beginning. What is OSINT and how is it generally useful to SOC practitioners? Uh, OSINT or open source intelligence uh, refers to how the intelligence collection is collected versus um, any really anything else. Um, and it's useful because no single organization has all of possible available data. So organizations, companies, they collect open source intelligence to fill in any gaps that they have within their own internal data sets. Okay. So what sorts of formats does OSINT come in? Well, OSINT is anything that is publicly accessible. There's no restrictions. Anybody can get it. So this could be blog posts, white papers, social media posts, uh, forum posts, things of those natures. Um, it could even possibly be, some might consider the dark web OSINT because you do need a special platforms, special tools to access it, but it's not restricted. Anybody can get those tools to access it. Okay. So the OS stands for open source. I've got that. But as I think about open source, you know, I, I think about the fact that there's a wide variety of people that are going to be providing this intelligence, a wide variety of, of content they're going to provide. How do you choose quality content? How do you make a decision about the the quality of the uh, data sources so that you pick uh, appropriate sources to follow and to look for news from? Well, that really comes down to two separate components, the source, the publisher of the content, and the individual piece itself. So for as the source, you're looking for those that are we have a strong track history a long history of producing reliable, credible reports. Um, and as far as the individual piece of the content, it needs to be first, it needs to be accurate. It needs to be logical in itself, and it needs to be corroborated with additional sources. So thinking about that a little bit, um, you know, are there are there good indicators that might help you pick those sorts of sources? Um. For sources, you're looking at those that have a long established track history within the cybersecurity uh, community. Um, you're going to know the names when you hear them as being top of their games, and they're predominantly produce reliable content over a long history of time. Okay. So I've chosen sources like that, or you know, I'm a, a SOC worker somewhere, and I'm I'm trying to choose sources of great information. But I think the next the next thing is those sources are probably going to tell me lots of stuff that doesn't necessarily matter to the organization I'm trying to protect. How do I wade through or how does somebody wade through that content for relevant information? Yeah, first you want to know why you're looking at the intelligence. Why why are you why did you collect this particular report? And it should all hinder down to answering your critical questions that need to be answered so you can make a decision. Um, for instance, if you're wanting to know the most common ransomware initial access vectors, you probably want to know, can my defenses help mitigate those risks from those access vectors? So you want to make sure that the report you're reading can help you answer that question. So for instance, a report about the latest uh, intrusion chain for a ransomware attack will be more relevant versus one that just analyzes the ransomware variant itself. Okay. So Eric, you've, you've walked us through selecting reliable sources, uh, sort of triaging the content for relevance, uh, but as a SOC practitioner, how does one get value out of that information? And how do you make that useful to you? 
Uh, again, that comes down to your questions that you're trying to answer. So in the case of the ransomware and national access factors, you're probably your overarching goal is to make sure that your defenses can protect you against those initial access vectors. So you want to take that information and for in that case, apply it to your defenses. Okay. From our intelligence, we know that these are the most common initial access vectors. So how can we go like, does our defenses actually mitigate those risks, mitigate, mitigate the impacts from those initial access vectors? And so, Eric, my last question for you, uh, undoubtedly, some OSINT content is going to be more easy to act on than other content. Can you talk us through a little bit about uh, how to really make good use of that content and, and how to make it actionable in your environment? Um, it's always, first and most, it's always easy to start with the indicators of compromise. Um, granted, they do have a low value as time goes on, but... Uh, that's always the first place to start. And then you can go through and you can start analyzing it, breaking out the different tactics, techniques, and procedures. Um, then as you move up, you can start looking at strategic. Has patterns changed? Has a are certain file type being seen more often in phishing campaigns? Are themes changing? And then that's, that's as you move up to the operational and strategic level of the intelligence. So Eric, what I've heard from you today is OSINT is open sourced intelligence. That means in part that it could come from anybody, anywhere. You've got to be careful to pick reliable sources who've got a proven track record of providing good intelligence information. Uh, you want to be careful as you're working through the data they've provided to make sure they're giving you relevant data appropriate to the organization you're trying to protect. Uh, you want to make sure that as you as you pull that data, uh, you're focusing on how that data can you can be used to improve your security posture, and as you're you know starting out perhaps, and as you're you're building your capabilities, one of the great things to start off with are the indicators of compromise. Again, you've got to focus on the right ones for your environment, for your tooling, etc., uh, and move on to additional items that can help you make a more ro more robust security program as time goes on. Yes, that is correct. Well, with that, Eric, I'd like to thank you for spending some time with us today, uh, and thanks for being here from the SOC with us. Yeah, thank you.